next, we are joined by Annie Kidder. She is the executive director of People for Education. Thank you so much, as always, for joining us on CP24. You're totally welcome. What do you make of these new changes? Uh, some of the positives, negatives, what do you think? Well, I think it's obviously important that everybody learns to read, do math, you know, understands technology in all its many forms. So. There's no question that that part's important. I think that we're a little bit worried about the idea of going kind of back to basics and the idea of going back to anything in uh, 2023 in a rapidly cha changing world is problematic if you're only doing not that and not looking at the broad range of skills and competencies that every kid uh, needs to have to navigate the messy world, uh, their future, the sort of nonlinear pathways. So I think it's missing some stuff. Specifically, what are you what are you talking about when it comes to back to basics? Well, uh, specifically focusing on the on the three R's uh, in our age is problematic. Even though, again, no question, everybody needs to learn, read, write, and do math. But we have to make sure we're not just focusing on that to. The the exclusion of other things. So employers, if we want to leap all the way there, are saying we need uh, people who can collaborate, who can problem solve, who, who really understand what critical thinking is. And you have to actually then explicitly you know, think of those as teachable, learnable skills in school. So they have to be added and not excluded from a kind of narrow definition of education. I'm curious what your take is on some of these mental health modules, because I think, you know, for many kids who spent, uh, you know, time throughout the pandemic, yeah. a lot of them suffered not only um, mentally, physically, uh, when it comes to just, you know, grasping the content. Uh, it, it seems like an important thing for, for kids to be able to understand health and, and wellness. Uh, um, you know, at a time when they've gone through uh, quite a bit. What's your take 100%, on that? 100%. And principals are telling us, we survey all the schools in Ontario every year, they're saying mental health is one of their number one concerns. They're really worried that kids don't have enough supports. But also we have to make sure we're not just developing modules, but that the supports are there too. So it's one thing to learn about it, but are there places to go for help? Uh, are, there, are, are there other kind of supports there? And even earlier in school, are we making sure kids are learning to understand their feelings, their emotions, relationships with other people, all of the things that lead to better mental health. Do you get worried sometimes when these announcements come out and that <laughs> it might be, <laughs> based on Sorry that response, <laughs> um, that uh, you know sometimes these, uh, these new programs, it, it might be a one size fits all, but it doesn't necessarily play out like that, that you know a lot of these programs need to be catered to specific uh, schools in certain areas. Obviously, we know that through testing, certain areas of the pockets of the city mm -hmm. do better when it comes to reading, writing, and arithmetic. And some places fall a little bit short when it comes to um, you know, financial literacy mm -hmm. or digital tech. W what's your take on that? Do you think the government needs to tailor uh, some of these programs to, or, or is it should, should it be just a widespread well, I all. think actually what we will have to worry about maybe a little bit is just the announcement. So is the announcement backed up with enough support, enough the financial support, enough staff support? There are big, you know, uh, people talk about staff shortages in places. So it's more that this is not, we have to make sure it's not just politics or window dressing and that also people inside schools have time to get ready. People have already complained. New curriculum just came in June. Got to put it in place next week. So it has to be more than the announcements. We need to see all of the kind of uh, policy and funding support underneath that announcement. Uh, before I let you go, any um, more information if parents want to find out kind of, you know, the work that uh, you guys do at People for Education and, and other resources that you might offer parents yes. as the kids head back to school? We do have. So at peopleforeducation.ca, we have parent tip sheets. We have a video about what how parents can help their kids succeed in school. And, yeah, they should go there and check it out. Thank Annie you. Kidder, always great to chat. Thanks Thank for you. stopping by.